In this video, we are finally going to be continuing what we started a few videos ago. We are going to be continuing the work on the Overland Tire Carrier build. In part one of this series, we fabricated the base of our bumper along with the dual swing outs. And today, in part two, we have plenty of work ahead of us. The goal of this bumper is for it to be able to carry a lot of the gear that we store inside of the Jeep that takes a precious room that Ash, the pups or I could be better utilizing instead. This bumper is going to carry our 35 inch spare, our max tracks, plenty of gas for future long trips, and our high lift jack. This is part two of fabricating the Overland Tire Carrier Bumper for the Green Cherokee. So I finally found some time to start working on the bumper again. This is part two of the bumper build series for the Green Cherokee. If you haven't seen part one, go check out the link down below. In this video, we're going to be fabricating the actual hoop that the tire is going to be bolted onto, as well as a few small things here and there. And we're going to finish up the sides of the bumper as well. So we got a lot to do, so let's get to work. So one of the first things I want to do today is get an end cap welded onto here. So we're going to go cut out a square, probably just by hand on the bandsaw, and we're going to get that welded on and get that taken care of. One thing I like doing to make sure a piece is going to fit right is cut it out on some cardboard first and test it out. Now this works really well with the big complicated pieces, and it does help a lot with the smaller pieces too. So this looks good. Let's go get it cut out. sort of what the tire hoop is going to look like. It's going to go 19 inches up from the base of the 2x3 and be 26 and a quarter inches wide. And we're going to be using inch and three quarter 120 wall DOM. We're using a program called Bentec. Basically, we just put in how tall we want the piece and how wide it needs to be. And it tells us where to start the bend and how long of a piece we need to start off up and it came out really well so now we just have to cut an angle right here so it sits flat on the two by three so we got the hoop tacked on and we got our tire at an angle it matches the angle of the back window of the jeep which i like it's around 70 degrees and we got our plate bolted onto the back of the wheel right here so now we're basically i cut out this piece of pvc and i angled it in the well notched it in the tube notcher we're going to cut out a piece similar to this just a little longer and this is what's going to connect the tire to the hoop and we're also going to be adding a support later on so let's do it tacked on and it's looking really good but we have one problem the tailgate rubs the tire when it's starting to open so that's a problem just not a big problem because all we have to do is cut off this piece of dom that's just tacked on and we're going to cut on a new one and we're going to make it roughly four inches longer this time and retest it got it sitting where we want it and we have no interference between the tire and the hatch so <laughs> that's good news so this piece we ended up cutting it four inches longer than the original piece the first piece 
And then we ended up taking it off about three times and putting it back on, cutting it down, very small amounts. And in the end, this piece ended up being only one inch longer than the original piece we had. So it works out. So for the next thing we do for this, we're gonna be cutting a support. Basically, it's gonna go from where the tire mounts to up here down to the center of the two by three right here. This is a test piece that I cut out of PVC and it's a little too short, but that's why we use PVC. So we don't waste DOM. So I'm gonna get to work on that. tacked in right there and everything's looking really good I'm really happy with this fitment up here the support actually attaches to the plate and this top piece of DOM so it's making both those pieces stronger and it comes down right here really nicely it comes down to a 30 degree angle is what I found out and so far so good I know I'm gonna be adding a big triangle gusset right here and now looking at this I might even add some right down here just to be safe you know but right now I think I'm ready to burn this all together <laughs> gussets this side is good to go so these are the two gussets at the bottom one right here right here fully welded front and back I also got this gusset up here this one's just meant to reinforce the DOM up here just to make sure we don't have any weak points so my last task I want to complete before getting to the sides of the bumper is getting these pins installed now originally I was just gonna weld these pins basically as low as I could on the 2x3 drill a hole straight into the bumper and we would be good to go, really. That would be the easy way out. Now, I don't think that looks all that clean. So what we're gonna be doing is cutting out a piece on the CNC and bending it on the press brake. It's gonna look something like that. Have two holes in the top right there. And it's gonna get welded right here in the center. So this way, the two pins can get welded basically in the center of the two by three. I think it's gonna look a lot cleaner and it's gonna function a little better as well. So I'm gonna get to work cutting those out. pins and the pin plate tacked on and everything's fitting really well pretty happy with the results so far and when you go to shut it just lift the pin up 
engage it, and then engage your latch. There's not much room for play. I don't hear any rattling. We're gonna be taking the Jeep on the trail this weekend, so we're gonna be able to test it out, see if we hear any excessive rattling or whatnot. Anyways, guys, getting pretty late, pretty dark, so we're gonna continue on tomorrow. So we got a lot done yesterday. Today's task is gonna be working on the side pieces of the bumper. I have a few ideas how I wanna do this, but my main goal is to just follow the body lines of the Jeep best I can. Like I've done before, I'm gonna start by taking some measurements and cutting out some pieces on cardboard and just fitting it all together to get a good idea of how this is all gonna to piece together. So I'm running into an issue right here, and I kind of always knew that this was gonna be an issue. Basically, right here, the bumper is gonna curve in. That's why it sticks out past the actual swing out, because I wanted it to curve in all along. That's gonna be an issue, because if I wanna put the same angle here for my depart rear departure angle, then this piece is gonna get in the way right here. The, the actual two by three that holds on the swing out. So a way around that is I'm gonna cut basically a triangle out of this and I'm gonna move the bottom of the two by three right here up, basically so this goes up at a curve and that should fix my issue. So this piece can follow the same curve that this piece is at and also be able to slightly turn at the same time. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Hopefully I don't screw it up. So I cut those pieces out, I pushed it up with the jack, and then I tacked it in place. And by the looks of it, it looks like it's gonna work pretty good. So now when I have a piece coming down like this, it's not gonna hit at all and we can get the angle we want. So let's get to cutting these pieces out. So I was able to get the sides of the bumper done today. I took it off a few times and welded the inside as well as the outside, so now we just got a lot of finish work we gotta do eventually. It got dark really quick, so we're gonna call it a night, but we're gonna be out here tomorrow because we still got a lot we need to do to this before the video is done. Two things in particular, I need to add some metal right here that follows the body line of the Jeep, as well as the tail light right here, just to fill in this empty space, as well as find a spot to mount this air fit in somewhere on the bumper. This air fitting was originally mounted to the body of the Jeep, but it got in the way once we built the bumper. So now we just need to find somewhere to relocate it. This is just used to air up our tires once we're done with the trail. It's hooked up to our CO2 on the inside. So anyways, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm finally back in the shop today. It's been a few weeks, but I'm finally ready to work on the bumper again. I'm gonna start by working on those pieces under the lights. So I got all these small pieces cut out that go underneath the lights. I used the bandsaw instead of the CNC just because I had a lot of scrap lying around and that worked perfect for these little pieces. And it took a lot less time than having to go and program the CNC and whatnot just for these little tiny pieces. So I'm 
made this little mount out of some thin sheet metal I had lying around. We're gonna see how it does with holding up my air fitting right behind this hole I made. This is just your regular shop air chuck on a bulkhead fitting on a quarter inch quick disconnect for an airline. Basically, we're gonna have the air fitting, the mount's gonna go right here, and then the nut gets screwed on right to the mount. So I got it mounted up right here, and this is basically what it's gonna look like. Something like that. To the end of bumper build part two. I tried to cram a lot into this video and also keep it under 20 minutes and I was able to do both of those things. Like always though, there's plenty more to be done to this, which means there's going to be more parts to this series. I did decide though, there's going to be a slight change of plans when it comes to what we're going to be mounting onto this swing out. The original plan was to use two of our five gallon jerry cans along with our high lift jack and the max tracks and then we were going to be all set and good to go. But then I saw some of these photos online. This is a Rotopax. It's a very durable plastic fuel container. This one in particular holds four gallons of fuel and you can also get them to hold water as well. I think my plan now is to buy two Rotopax and I can angle them along with the Max Trax to be the same angle as this tire and I think that'll look absolutely amazing. There's also gonna be a part to this series where we remove the bumper, we're gonna be cleaning it up, smoothing it out, bringing it down to bare metal, and we're gonna be painting it. We're gonna be painting it with some legit paint and a legit paint gun. Now, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out the channel. We got plenty of content and we got plenty more coming your way. We have tons of trips planned and we got tons more work to be done in all the Jeeps we got in the yard. Be sure to throw us a like, a comment, and definitely a subscribe. And also check out Ashley's new blog post on the website. Thank you so much, everyone. Until next time. Oh,